Hi, I'm Nikki with SCM Connections. Today I'm going to talk about the power of constraints with respect to the supply optimizer in SAP IVP. One of IVP's greatest strengths is the flexible modeling capabilities, and therefore it's important to understand how to leverage that to get the maximum value for your business. The IVP supply optimizer is a tool that requires thorough tuning of the inputs in order to derive results that can really benefit the business. Let's take a quick look at how these inputs interact with each other and ultimately impact the solve. The settings for the optimizer are configured in the optimizer profile shown here. The optimizer's objective function is to minimize total overall costs. In the case of profit maximization, the optimizer chooses not to deliver or produce a product if the costs are higher than the sales price. In the case of delivery maximization, the optimizer prefers to satisfy customer demand before anything else, barring capacity constraints, of course. Let's jump over to the IVP Excel interface. This view highlights consensus demand, an input to the solve, and customer receipts, the output of the optimizer. You can see that after running the optimizer, there looks to be some shortfall. This is driven by the various constraints or limitations we have set. Let's take a look. Here we're looking at our production resource capacity. You can see that we have set a capacity supply of 1000 for these three resources. This is an example of a hard constraint, something that can't be violated by the optimizer. Since there are other products that require these resources as well, the optimizer is indicating to us that each of these resources will be actually operating at 100% capacity. This explains why we have demand shortfall. If we produced any more, we would be using these resources over 100% capacity, which wouldn't be possible. Hence, resource capacity is a hard constraint. If we take a look at the production tab, we can see production receipts as well as a row for production receipts adjusted interactive. This field gives planners the opportunity to enter adjusted values for production receipts. And this is an example of a pseudo hard constraint. A pseudo hard constraint actually causes a large penalty cost if violated. And since the optimizer wants to minimize overall costs, they are only violated when absolutely necessary. In this case, the planner wants the system to adhere to the adjusted production receipts entered by the user, but if the optimizer cannot find any feasible solution, it may violate this adjustment. Therefore, adjusted production receipts is a pseudo-hard constraint. Going back to the demand tab, let's look at non-delivery cost rate. This is a great example of a soft constraint, which represents the impact of certain decisions. Non-delivery cost rate is the cost associated with shorting the customer and this pays, plays directly into the overall cost of the solve. It is a soft constraint because we're not saying you can never short the customer. Rather, we're saying shorting the customer has a certain financial impact, so consider that when determining the best solution. By setting the non-delivery cost rate very high, we make delivering the product more and more profitable and sway the optimizer in that direction. In this case, we know that we still have shortfall because of our capacity constraints. So our soft constraint on non-delivery is not going to outweigh that. Let's take a look at the transportation tab, where we can see that the various transportation lanes and the associated transportation cost rates. This is an example of a cost that factors into the optimizer and is used to model preferences. In this case, for each of the three DCs, there is a different cost associated with transportation from the various plants. The plant closer to the DC has the lowest cost rate. Therefore, the optimizer is going to minimize costs and increase the transport supply on the less expensive transportation lanes. That's why we primarily see transport supply on the transportation lanes with a cost of 1 here. Thanks for watching. For more information on the supply optimizer constraints or other IBP topics, visit us at scmconnections.com.